Good afternoon. My name is Lori Lee, and I am the Improving Literacy Research Alliance Manager with the Regional Educational Laboratory, RHEL Southeast. Welcome to the webinar, Supporting Children's Reading at Home, Family Resources for Kindergarten through Third Grade. If you're an educator, we're glad you're here. And if you are participating as a family member or a caregiver of young children, we're especially excited that you've joined us. This webinar is truly just for you. During the webinar, we'll walk you through our Supporting Your Child's Reading at Home website, which houses many family-friendly and fun activities that can help you engage your child in literacy. This project was actually born out of another, a guide for K-3 teachers to help the families of children in their classrooms. When it became clear that COVID-19 was going to require that families spend a great deal of time together, we worked to extract the family activities from our teacher guide, create new instructions, and organize them on a website so they're read readily available for everyone to use. I'd like to thank Dr. Marcia Kasanovich from REL Southeast. She's the lead author of the teacher guide and the lead on this project. She's truly done the lion's share of this work. We would also like to thank Dr. Barbara Foreman, who's the retired director of REL Southeast, who also provided her expertise, and Dr. Nicole Patton-Terry, who's the deputy director for REL Southeast, for proposing this webinar and sharing the opportunity widely. In addition, this project would not have been possible without Amy Campbell, Nathan Archer, and Todd Scott from REL Southeast, who worked to edit and post our resources. Finally, we would all like to thank our colleagues at the Georgia Department of Education who requested the teacher guide and the educators in Georgia who piloted the guide for us. To begin with, I'd like to provide just some housekeeping information before we get started in earnest. First, we ask that you're patient with us as we navigate the technology today. Like many of you, we are all working remotely from our homes, and that means we have a few additional challenges. We're as prepared as possible and hopeful that everything will run smoothly, but please extend us some grace if it doesn't. Also, please feel free to enter any questions that you have in the chat box. We'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible during our time together, but we can also respond after the webinar if you leave your email address. Finally, you will be receiving an email after the webinar that will contain a link to the recording of our session and links to two surveys. One of the links will be to a brief survey targeted to families and caregivers, and the other is geared to educators. We ask that you choose the most appropriate survey for you and complete it. We'll show you a few of the questions that will be asked on the survey targeted for families right after we take a look at our objectives. We value your feedback and we'll definitely use it to improve upcoming webinars. So we thank you in advance for doing that for us. Now you see our objectives on the screen. We're going to spend most of our time together at the website itself. So you can get a feel for what is available, including the family videos, activities, and you can see how they can be used uh, with your own children in your home. So you see those objectives, we'll overview the components, we'll walk through the website, uh, we'll take a moment to discuss how those family resources can be used, and we'll provide a little bit of time for questions and answers, okay? In a moment, you're going to see, and now you do see, some of the survey items that I mentioned. You might keep them in mind as we make our way through the rest of our webinar. <clears throat> so now I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Marcia Kasanovich, who has been the go-to person for this project. And she has uh, revisited the activities, created directions for parents, filmed videos, and worked with our web team to get everything posted on our family-friendly friend website. Dr. Kasanovich will provide us with our virtual tour this afternoon. So let's get started. Great. Thank you very much, Lori. And I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to educators, caregivers, and parents who are joining us. We appreciate all the support you provide children in foundational reading skills. We have a very short time today um, together, but I'd like you to leave this webinar understanding the organization of the website and feeling confident selecting and using the resources. The resources are family activities and family videos. 
What you see on your screen now is the landing page. So this is a little introduction and you can see it's organized by grade level, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. And each grade level has its own color. So it's um, color coded. The grade levels are across the top. Now we're going to provide an overview of all the grade levels today, but we're going to take a really close look at kindergarten, keeping in mind that the grade levels one through three are organized in the exact same way but they have grade specific level um, family activities and videos for them. So let's take a look at kindergarten. You'll notice on the left side of the page, we have the recommendations. Now these are the four recommendations taken right from the practice guide that IES put out for teachers. And what we did is we took that language and we translated it into family friendly language. And so the recommendations are developing oral language, uh, linking sounds to letters, blending letters, recognizing writing words, and recommendation four is reading for understanding. And so every grade level has these exact same recommendations on the left side. And every grade level has the same introduction right here. So let's take a look at recommendation one, developing language. Um, you'll notice there's a little introduction and then we have these accordion tabs on the left and that's how you access the family videos and the family activities. And so for each video that you see, there'll be key points made about the video. So if you read those, those are the really important parts to keep in mind as you're conducting the activity with your child. And then the activities follow. If there's a video that has an activity related to it, the activities follow it. So we, the uh, activities have a title, a PDF icon, and about a one sentence description of what that activity is all about. Okay. So recommendation one across all, late, uh, all grade levels is about exposing your child to the language that is common in books and schools. So the main idea is um, we, we want you to read with your children, talk with your children um, about books and experiences that they have and that you have together. And all of this reading and talking together will help build their vocabulary, their oral language, and their knowledge about the world. So for this one of talking while you read, that's exactly what it is. So any book that you share with your child, we want you to talk about it. So every page or every other page, stop and ask questions. So we're going to watch just a, a couple minutes of the videos. The videos are really short. We kept them less than five minutes. Most of them are close to three minutes. But the ones about talking and discussions and conversations, those are a little bit longer. But I'm just going to show you just the beginning of it, just to give you a flavor of what it's all about. And just keep in mind, we're all on Wi-Fi. So the important part is to hear what's going on. And when you watch it on your computer, it will be very, it will be clear. So this is talking while you read, a mom and a daughter. I want to read a book called Llama Llama and the Bully Goat. Now, what's a bully? A, a bully is somebody that's being mean to you and, and they like to do the same thing over and over again. They do the same thing over and over again. Like what? Like, like kick you in the face or punch you in the stomach or um, call you bad names. Well, that's not very nice, is it? The bullies are not very nice, right? Yeah. yeah. Are you a bully? No. No, no. I want you to pay attention to who might be being a bully in this story, okay? Mama, Mama, and the Bully Goat. Llama, Llama, busy day. Writing, counting, pictures, clay. Roll a pancake, draw the sun. Almost everyone has fun. What's going on in this picture? Um, they're they're making like art and and crafts like. They're drawing math equations. Um, they're math drawing, equations. drawing, and they are playing with clay. Oh, no, no, you said math equations. That's a pretty big word. What is an equation? Um, an equation is when you're adding or subtracting. Oh, I like those nice big math words. All right, 
time for circle, time for song, time to clap and sing along. Kitty, Rhino, Sheep, and Calf, Mama, Nella, and Giraffe all sing songs in their own way. Moo and go and bah and hooray. Do you notice these kids doing some of the things that you do at school? They're singing in the um, a circle and they're and they're like running and they're like running. What's he doing in the garden? Um, he's laughing and he's um being he's being mean. He's not he is being mean. And what was that word at the beginning of our story? That was he's being a bully, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, so that was a little flavor of talking while you read. And then we have an activity where we actually have a story for you to read with your child and telling you the process of um, types of questions to ask as you read the story. And we even embedded some of the questions um, for you to ask as you read that story. And so that's a little practice. And then talking while you read bookmark, you can use this process with any book that you read. You notice that that mom asked questions on almost every other page. So you can use this bookmark and it, it prompts you and, and reminds you of how to ask questions and ask questions frequently. And it gives you some example questions as well. So that's talking while you read. And then we also have supporting oral language and vocabulary development. And so we have a video of a caretaker actually um, baking cupcakes with a kindergartner and a second grader and an infant. So you'll hear all sorts of language when they talk about the recipe and gathering ingredients and what they're making. And so there's a lot of oral language and vocabulary development that can go on in the kitchen as you're baking together. And there's also dinner table talk where there's a family eating dinner and the parents are asking open-ended questions to help the kids, you know, not just answer yes or no, but to talk about their day. And so, as you know, a lot of action happens in the kitchen at home. So we have a lot of activities of the types of questions that you can ask while at the dinner table, as well as um, cooking conversations when you're baking or making dinner together, all those um, measurement, uh, things that you're talking about, all the ingredients, the recipes, and then everyday things that we do, uh, making grocery lists, making our to-do lists for the chores that we need to get done, making labels for containers in our kitchen. Whatever we do, that writing can also help support our children. So involving them in all sorts of things that we're doing will help support their reading development. Grocery shop talk, we have a, a grocery list you can make with your children. And then the types of questions, if you take your children grocery shopping with you, that is a great place to have conversations because there are so many different things to talk about in the produce section and the bakery. Um, so uh, different types of questions that you can ask while you're at the grocery store. So that is recommendation one. Recommendation two is linking sounds to letters. And this is all about helping your child link sounds in speech to letters in print. So in kindergarten, there are a lot of activities for children to listen to parts of words and individual sounds in words of spoken language. So they're not reading, but they're listening to the sounds in language. So many of the activities that we have here won't include the print, it won't include them reading, but it's a lot of you talking and, and playing with the sounds of language because that will help your children link sounds to letters when those letters are introduced. So we have syllable games that you can play where, this is a fun one where my kids run around the house and pick up an apple or a banana or a magazine and then we clap the number of syllables and count how many syllables we hear in a word. So in the activity, we give directions for the parent we give materials if there are any materials, and then we also give examples of different types of syllables and some books to share, suggested books to share. So that's all about syllables. Um, we also have uh, sounds and words for rhyming. So nursery rhyme time, we have nursery rhymes that you can sing. Again, this is for the adults. So you're singing and um, these nursery rhymes with your child. And then eventually they will know them so well that you can say, Jack and Jill went up the, and then you want them to fill in the blank, the rhyming word. 
So that's all about rhyming. We have a rhyme time activity where the child looks at a picture card and has to decide whether the like box and fox rhyme or not. So again, every activity is organized the same for the adult. We have the directions at the top, we have a visual of what it looks like, and we also have a key. So we have the answers, the key, that's the answers. And then if there are materials that go along with it, they are, they are also included. All right, individual sounds and words. Eventually we want children to get to hear the individual sounds and words. So here, here I am working with my kindergartner at the time to add a sound to make a new word. It's the beginning of my smile. All right, we're going to play a game, okay? Okay. We're going to add a sound to a word to make a new word. Let me show you. So, say ox. Ox. Okay. Now add to the beginning of ox. Ox. You made a new word, right? Good job. Say at. At. Now at at the beginning of the word. That's right. <laughs> we put a new sound, made the word, and made a new word. Say ice. Ice. Add mmm to ice. Nice. Nice. Oh. <laughs> nice and nice. Say ring. Ring. Add st to the beginning. Sting. That's close. Say ring. Ring. Now st. Ring. String. Yeah. String. 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 That was a hard one. All right. Say am. Am. Add to the beginning of am. Am. Nice. Say mile. Mile. Add to the beginning of mile. Smile. Got it. Okay. So, um, Again, we have the activity that follows that follows the the video that we just saw. So there's what's the first sound song? You can sing a song. Again, this is just for the we do not expect kindergartners to read this. This is all about listening. And then here's the add a sound to make a new word activity that you just saw. Eventually, we want kindergartners to be able to link those sounds that they're hearing, those individual sounds, to letters. So here's, we'll just watch a minute of this video where they're actually linking the sounds to a letter to practice their letter sounds. What's this letter sound? Mm. Can you think of a word that begins with M? Matt. Mm. Matt. Good. And let's think about this one. What's this one? What word? Begins with some. Some. Perfect. That's a good one. How about this one? Ooh. That's right. And what third begins with? Hug. Oh, Hug. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, and then again, you have the, um, what follows that video is the actual activity itself. So you have the directions, a visual of what it looks like, and then you have the letter arc and the letters that you can cut out. And then we want kids to actually be able to spell words. So we have letter cards. Again, if most of the activities, um, are in this sequential order that start with easier activities and move to more difficult activities. And that's how all of them are organized on this site. So this one, we'll just watch a little bit of this one as well. This is a, the mom and daughter actually using letter cards um, to spell some simple words. You're gonna spell some words for me. Can you spell 
Well, these words have two sounds in them, okay? So I want for you to spell the word it. It. It is a good day. Can you put them in the squares for me? Nice job. It. Go ahead and take it down. All right. Can you spell up? Up. The plane went up into the clouds. Up. Two sounds. Excellent. That's up. Good. Let's do some part of it. <laughs> oh boy. Can we do three sounds? Okay, three sounds. I want you to spell bag. Bag. Her bag is heavy. Bag. The bag. We put them in the squares. Can you put them in the squares for me? Excellent. This word is dag. I'd like for you to spell bag. Nice job. We just mixed up that B and Okay. So, and you'll notice, even though they're working on spelling words and letter sounds, the mom was still using those, those words and sentences to help build the vocabulary, vocabulary and make sure her daughter understands uh, those words. So, let's move on to recommendation three. And recommendation three is all about using your knowledge of letter sounds and putting them together or blending them to read words. Um, and it's about putting together word parts as children begin to read words with more than one syllable. Now, this is moving on to the later grades, but in kindergarten, we're, we're talking about blending single syllable words. So using all those letter sounds that you've learned, and for example, blending with letter puzzles, you have the directions of how to do it, you have a visual, and then you also have the letter puzzles that you can cut out, scatter on the table, and then spell words and have your child put the, the letter pieces together to spell the word. We also have um, activities about word families. Word families um, is a group of words that share the same letter pattern like AT, AT. You can spell many words with the word AT, cat, sat, rat. We have a, a video about it and then the activity, word family fun. Again, the directions are there for the adult, a visual of what it looks like, some suggested books to share that have a lot of um, word families within the books, and then the letter cards that you cut out and the word families that you cut out and then you build and read words. All right. We have high frequency words, which are words that appear frequently in books. And so we have a memory game, there's a video for it, but a memory game, so it tells you how to set it up, how to play it, and then a visual for what it looks like. And then we have the kindergarten high frequency words that you cut out to use to play the memory game. And then challenging and important words. So there are many books that you'll read to your child or your child will want to read that have challenging words in it, like Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, so, and you don't want to discourage the, your child from reading those books or reading those books to your children. So what we suggest is you pull out a few of those challenging words before you read the book and explain what they mean to your child, have your child look at them and say them. And so we have a, a bookmark that reminds you of this process of what to do. Look, look at the book, find three challenging words, point them out to your child, have your child say them, explain what they mean. And then as you read the book, talk about those words when you, when you come to them in the book. And then we also have some su suggested books to share. And then the final recommendation, recommendation four, is all about helping your child read fluently and understand what is read, because that is the whole point of why we do all these foundational reading skills. We want your child to understand what they read. Um, so reading fluently means you read the words correctly at a conversational pace and with expression. So each of these, and even though it, your kindergarten may not be reading yet, all of these things you can model for your child. So reading accurately and efficiently, we have big brother reading to little brother video, and he's reading with expression and they're laughing at silly parts. 
Um, so those are things, modeling fluent reading is a really important thing to do for your child. Um, and then we have reading at bedtime examples. And then when your child starts reading, some of those simple books that are decodable, and decodable just means that your child has learned the letter sounds for every word that's in that book and has learned some sort of process of blending or putting those sounds together to read the book. So once they start reading that, we have a video of Big Brother helping Little Brother, reminding him, you know, to point to the words and sound out a word if he had trouble with it. And then we have when I read to you and when you read to me bookmarks. So we have tips about when you read to your child, things for you to keep in mind. And then when your child reads to you, things to keep in mind, pick, how to pick out books and what to do when your child comes to a word that is difficult for him or her to read. Um, recognizing misread words and correcting errors. That's another very important part of reading fluently. And so in this video, I actually make a mistake on purpose and then say, oh, wait, does that make sense? So I'm thinking about my thought, pro I'm thinking about the error I made, but I'm thinking out loud. And that's really important. Does that make sense? And I go back and try and fix my mistake. So we have an activity where your child can actually read um, the story on the right, and then it tells you the process of what to do. So if they make a mistake, you, sit, you read that exact same sentence the way they did and say, wait, does that make sense? And then see if your child can go back and find the error. And if not, then it tells you how to support that, that misread word. And then oral reading practice. When they do begin reading, um, echo reading is an excellent thing to do. And that just means you're sharing a book and the adult reads a sentence and the child reads that exact same sentence. And so you're echo reading that whole book. And it's important for the child to look at the text as you're reading. Um, and then for uh, reading together, it's the same idea, but you're reading the same text at the same time. So we have a, a bookmark to, to tell you the steps of echo reading on one side, and then the process of reading together on the other side. And we suggest some books that are, are fun to read together or echo read. So that is a very quick overview of the four recommendations for kindergarten. I just wanna point out, I think I have a couple minutes. I just wanna point out that first grade, exact, it's organized the exact same way. We have the recommendations on the left-hand side. That's how you get to the activities and the videos um, and then in second grade same thing one thing i want to point out for second and third grade when you get to recommendation two it says that linking individual letter sounds to letters is typically achieved by second grade but if your child still needs practice doing that we recommend going to first grade and just working on the recommendation two activities in first grade but know that there are, we get very sophisticated, we, you know, blending and reading words, we get into sound spelling patterns. So we give tips for the adults on the website to remind you of, of examples of different sound spelling patterns. We give you examples of um, syllables, <laughs> of what syllable types are and what the patterns are and give examples of that because a lot of the activities we get into are multisyllabic words, words with more than one syllable. Um, common word parts, we get into um, contractions and prefixes and suffixes. Um, we have more high frequency words. Whenever you see one, two, or three for text, that just means the easier text is, that, is the first one, and as it progresses, it gets a little more difficult. So here they're reading words in a word list, and then they're reading texts that include those words. For second grade, all the videos will be posted next week, um, and we are working on the third grade videos, but all the activities for second and third grade are available. And I think I'm going to stop there. I think we're on time, Lori, to answer some questions. I really appreciate your time and attention today, and we'd be happy to answer questions for you about the site or the activities. Thank you so much, Marcia. And I would just like to provide a reminder um, that um, we certainly meant for the experience with um, families and children to be, we want that to be a very positive experience. So if you engage with your child 
and some of these activities and find they're too difficult, please feel free just to stop, discontinue what you're doing, and move back to something that's easier. Uh, that's absolutely fine. We want this to be an opportunity for families and children to enjoy being with one another and learning together. And we certainly don't want it to be a frustrating experience at all. Um, so I wanted to make that note. And then thank you, Marcia. And I wanted to also emphasize the fact that uh, Marcia has done a great job of really providing a lot of support for family members. And so the instructions are very detailed. You'll see the videos took place in, um, in the home. So these are very doable activities for families to conduct um, with children. So um, wanted to make sure again that um, families were well supported and that you felt that way. Uh, so I can't really, I can't see the questions in the chat, but I think that, um, let me see, maybe I can. All and right, I, I, I see some questions now. Okay. Oh, I use these activities with my child who has reading disabilities or dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. And again, like Lori said, um, keep in mind recommendation one, developing language. You can do that with preschoolers. You can do that with anybody because it's all about you're having discussions about the book that you're reading. So if you read the whole book to your child, that's fine. Just stop on every other page and have a talk about it. Um, and recommendation four is the same way. It's, it's a lot of modeling, uh, how to read fluently, but it's important to have your child looking at the text as you're reading and point to the text as you're reading so they follow along. So yeah, absolutely, these, these activities can be used with anybody. Okay. And can I use any book? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We wanna encourage you, um, you know, in kindergarten, especially, a lot of times we use narrative, which is, you know, stories, and, it, and stories are really important, and they have characters, and they have a setting, and a problem and solution, and we have some activities that talk about that, uh, but we also want to encourage people to use informational texts, so texts about science, and texts about social studies, and texts about animals, or anything like that, um, so a variety of texts is what we, what we suggest, but yes, any text will work. And that's an excellent thought, Marcia, because we want to certainly build knowledge uh, for uh, with our children as well. And that informational text does a good uh, job with doing that. So what if your child just wants to read and doesn't want to answer any questions? <laughs> that's a great question. Um, maybe maybe have them be the teacher and have them come up with questions to ask you if you're reading a book together. Yeah, there you go. That's a great idea. <laughs> so can I do the third grade activities even if my child is in first grade? If it, if it works and they're not frustrated, I say go for it, absolutely. Yes. Like Lori said, if, it, if it's becoming frustrated, then that's not the point. The point is to practice these skills, hoping these skills have already been taught um, but so we want to practice and develop fluency and confidence. So yeah, if, if your first grader can work on those third grade things and, and be excited about it, I definitely encourage that. Okay, does it matter if kindergarten kids are learning letters in alphabetical order? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what we really want is, um, children to learn obviously all the letters but at the very beginning it's what we would prefer is children to learn um, some letters like m and t and s and a couple vowels like a and i so that we can immediately begin not immediately but very quickly begin to show them how those letters are can be put together blended to read words so i, I do know a lot of um teachers and curriculum do teach in order like that but if you're spending a, a whole week or two weeks on one letter in alphabetical order that's going to take a lot of weeks to get through the whole alphabet mm -hmm. now that's an excellent point um like you said marcia we want kids to be able to begin to put together words quickly i mean that's a motivating factor when they can see that for ESL parents, should they be reading in their native language or in 
broken English? That's a good question too, Laura. You want to help with that? Yeah. <laughs> well, we know that with English learners that they're, you know, that fluency in their native language can help. Um, that said, um, the materials are um, created in English and, um, you know, the broken English, even though it's not fluent, I think it would be helpful to have some exposure in English as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if I don't have a printer at home to print the activities? Are there different, what kinds of things can I use at home instead? That's a great question. And I did this a lot too. Um, I, I have some scrap paper at home. You can use really anything and make the letter cards. Just look at what it, look at the um, letter cards online or whichever uh, activity you're looking at. And you can use whatever you have at home, index cards, scrap paper, pads of paper, post-it notes, anything you want will work. In fact, there's one activity that we have, I think in first grade, that's practicing letter sounds using junk mail. So we literally have junk mail and we just circled some letters, letters and had um, my first grader practice some, those let, saying those letter sounds. Do you recommend any websites for books for K3? That's a good question. Um, we do, we, we use a lot from Project Gutenberg um, and I believe we have it on the introduction page. we did yeah we do right here uh, so on the introduction page for recommendation one there's something called project gutenberg and there there on that site are, is a lot a lot of different texts that you can use for free so it's not all great but it's free it's accessible um we use youtube youtube for kids a lot at my house um you can't download books, but you can see books being read. Um, so yeah, I would just search your your app store for free books, but those are a couple a couple suggestions. Okay. So how's this different from using apps on my iPad or or my phone? Is it better to do these activities instead? Uh, can you say that question again? Sure. How is this different from using apps on my iPad or phone? Is it better to do these activities instead? It depends on the app. It really does. Um, I mean, I know there are some really good apps out there and a lot of them you have to pay for, um, but I know there's some junky ones out there as well. Um, this is free. This is, goes in sequential order. This is very explicit. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying don't use apps, but be selective about what, what you're using. Yeah, and I would add to that as well. I think there is some benefit. I mean, I know especially now when we're home so much together and that school has kind of been online that we worry sometimes about the screen time with our kids. And these kinds of activities um, where, where parents and children are interacting and without technology uh, is sometimes very valuable. So mm -hmm. I think just having, you know, a child and a, pa and a parent actually spending time together without that technology um, yep. can be something that's beneficial. Yeah, Lori, that's an excellent point. Thank you for saying that. that. That's the best thing about these activities because they're fun, they're easy to, to implement, but it's making the time. So if you can make the time to do this, I mean, practicing oral language vocabulary development is really hard to do on an app. So I think I think spending that time with, with, with children is really important. Mm -hmm. So this is somewhat related. Nowadays, most books are online. Do you recommend using those or is a hard copy better? Hmm. I think it's that's a personal choice. I think beginning readers, I like hard copies. Um, because you can both see it better, you can point to the words as you're going, which a lot, even my, you know, my second grader, he is a much more accurate reader when he is pointing to the words. So um, 
you know, as they get older, it's more of a personal choice. But I think in the beginning, and this is this is again Marcia's preference. <laughs> I, I like the the real books. Okay. Um, let's ask about free resources for decodable text. Mm. That's a great question too. I don't. I would just do some searches. It, um, Lori and I looked a lot. It's it, there. It's hard to find. <laughs> But there are there are some free just do some searches we just couldn't use them because of copyright issues and things like mm -hmm. that but there are some and, free and also we had a suggestion pbs kids parents mm -hmm. have the wonderful book finding feature oh that's fantastic yes thank you and i know we spent yeah. a lot of in kindergarten but you know if there's enough interest we'd be happy to go into the later grades and do another webinar at, an, at another time mm -hmm. okay all right a couple more questions that have to do with students that perhaps uh, um, have some disabilities um, expressive language disorder or dyslexia um, can these be used with those students? And again, I think we would say certainly, you know, um, again, the activities are meant to engage um, parents and children with literacy and um, fam families know their kids. And so just choosing those activities that are most appropriate and not frustrating to your child, um, you know, is certainly would be our guidance. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind that recommendation one and four, I mean, you can do all the reading with uh, your child and talking with your child for recommendation one and four activities. And then when you do use activities from recommendation two and three, they are in, um, in order of difficulty. So they start with simpler and move to more complex. So if that, that can kind of guide you as you're selecting activities. Okay. And I think maybe this may be our last question. And this is, um, okay, a couple of different thoughts. So when should children be able to recognize the difference between B and D? <laughs> yes. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, and the, the one video, I wish I would have showed it longer. The video, the, the very first video showed kindergarten um, llama Llama Bully Goat. So if you go back, look at that. And this mom gives a great suggestion of recognizing B and D. It's too hard to explain, right? Because I need to show you, but it's actually using your hands that look like a B and a D, and it looks like a bed. But go back and look at that video, and and that's a good. It's a good way to help. Um, but I mean, even kindergarten, first grade, even sometimes a second grader once in a while we'll mix it up um so wait did i answer the question Lori? i think so yeah there is no exact time yeah okay uh one suggestion for culturally rebel relevant books is mayasbooknook.com so um there's lots of authentic literature there uh, with diverse characters and families so that might be something that um, you might try um, check out again Maya's M A Y A S booknook all one word dot com. Oh, great suggestion! Thank you. Okay, and then also um, if if they're if you're engaging with your child and they um, they can't answer some of the questions that you ask during the course of reading, um, as um, as a caregiver or parent, you can certainly model by answering that question yourself and explaining your answer to them. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's something that um, certainly could be done again with your, with your children. And you'll see a lot of that in the videos. So if, again, the videos are really short. So in looking at the key points about the videos, you'll see a lot. If they don't know the answer, it's just the caregiver or the parent modeling uh, the correct answer. Okay. Well, our time is up. Uh, we would like to thank you again for joining us this afternoon and remind you that you'll be receiving an email uh, with a link to um, this presentation 
and also links to um, surveys. One will be geared to educators, the other uh, more targeted to families. And again, we would really invite you to complete those surveys and um, uh, knowing that we'll use that information um, uh, to drive other webinars. So thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Marcia, thank you for leading us through the website and thank you for all of the work that you've done on it and to the others that have been involved with the project. Um, any closing thoughts? No, just appreciate you, Lori, and I appreciate all our participants today. Our emails are on the screen. If you have follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.